One of the things that I've come to enjoy in model trains over the years is hosting an operating session. So this video is going to be why you should consider hosting an operating session. I've got six reasons why I personally think you should host an operating session. The first one is keeping the interest in your hobby alive. Well, it's fine and dandy to be a lone wolf and run your model trains by yourself. It can get a little dry at times. But having those people over and having a session together really adds dimension to your train layout and interest. Hosting an operating session can also be a way for you to share the hobby with others. Now, while many will be already interested in the hobby, you may come across people who have never really gotten into it, or maybe have trains as a kid. And if you have them over, it may rekindle their interest, and who knows, you may actually help grow the hobby and if not, at least you've got some more people interested in running trains. Similar to the second point, having operating sessions is also an opportunity for meeting others in the hobby. Initially, we were a group of three friends that started up this current group, and it grew. Because friends have friends, and, and they know other people, and so on and so forth. And, you know, at times we've had as many as ten people running trains. So, like I said, a great way to meet others in the hobby. Having friends and growing your group is also a great way to get help. Now, this can even happen before having an operating session. Maybe you've got a brand new layout going up. They can help you with bench work and laying track, uh, sub road bed, you name it. You know, wiring, everything. Some people have better talents than others. And if you share your talents, it really helps in, in making a small railroad a very enjoyable and successful thing to run. Here's a couple of examples of where I specifically got help on my train layout. The first is I needed to run tracks, yes, behind my furnace and hot water heater. I don't highly recommend it, but with the design of my basement, I felt I had to do it to connect the layout. A friend of mine came over one day, and he helped me put down the bench work and the track, and I really couldn't have done it without his help. Now, the other area was my coal mine. A friend of mine... He likes handling track, and he's very good at it. Something I'm not maybe that great at. And he took the time. He did a wonderful job, as you can see in the picture here. Before I move on, I should also mention, almost forgot, this is very important, the scratch building. It's something that one day I want to get involved in. But uh, another friend of mine, the same one who helped me put the track and the bench work behind the furnace, built this station for me. It's a model of Penticton Station. And he did a wonderful job, and I've also got a picture I took when I was out there, so you can kind of see the similarities. He uh, did a really wonderful job in scratch building. The fifth item on my list can be a bit of a touchy subject, advice and or feedback. You may not always want to hear feedback, but don't take it as pure criticism. Try and take it for what it's worth, and sometimes it can be very constructive. You know, it might be something in regards to maybe some help with scenery. It may be a minor operations thing that you could improve. Maybe it's something to do with a minor redesign of some track. Or, in my case, I was experiencing shorts, which a lot of people do with DCC operation. But I did not have my layout wired into districts. So based on some recommendations, I did just that. And it does help, because if you get a short in one district, it does not affect the other districts on your layout, and those trains can operate in those areas. However, my circuit breakers... That was all they were, were circuit breakers. I was also having some issues with power. So if I have a bunch of guests over with some DCC engines with a lot of sound and other accessories, it basically shut my layout down, which wasn't much fun if you're having friends over for operating trains. So I bought a booster from Tam Valley, as can be seen here. It cost me a little bit, but they're, you know, relatively reasonable, I guess. And since I hooked that up, knock on wood, I haven't had any issues with power, but we'll still be testing that out. So my final and sixth reason why I think you should host an operating session is it helps make improvements to your operations on your train layout. Now that kind of goes hand in hand with advice and feedback, but to me it's its own little topic. So when you set up your train though, when you build it, you design it for operation, in your mind, you know exactly how it works. And these things that may be obvious to you are not going to be obvious to other people, especially when they come over to visit for the first time. Even after multiple sessions, believe me, 
I have to explain some things over and over again to me, which are obvious, but when people only come over a few times a year or whatever, they really aren't going to remember all this stuff. There's a lot of detail in, you know, what cars go where, what industries, what trains. There's a lot going on there. So you really need to design it to make things seem maybe overly obvious to you. Whether that means putting signs and labels on your layout, showing where locations are, industries, uh, cardinal directions, which way is west, which way is east, north, south, you know, things like that. And even on my waybills and that, what sometimes looks obvious to me may not be obvious to others, but the simpler you make it, the old KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, it really does apply here. And believe me, um, I've learned a lot over the years, and it just really pays to, to listen to what people's questions are on that and then make notes about that. In addition to that, one of the things that I come up with is what I call an orientation of train layout. And what it is is sometimes, you know, maybe while you're having dinner before you guys start running the trains or what have you, you can talk a little bit about what the purpose of the train layout is and what the orientation of layout is and it helps people get a little bit familiar with what they're going to be doing on a train layout and make them feel at ease, you know, like maybe somebody's never really run a train or that system before. You can show them how to do all this and you can, you know, you already have a more experienced crew member um, run the train with them or whatever. But, you know, you want to make the hobby enjoyable for everybody. You don't want to stress them out. They probably have that at work already. So they just want to come have fun and run trains. I hope you found those six reasons interesting. And here I'll summarize them quickly here. So they are, I'm always interest or keeping the interest, sharing the hobby, meeting others in the hobby, getting help with your layout, getting advice and or feedback on your layout. And lastly, from that feedback or what have you, making improvements to your operation. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw and wish to see more content on model trains and real trains, please subscribe to my channel.